sleepapnea.org presents Portraits, Living with Sleep Apnea, a conversation with Janie Sito. Janie, what were the main symptoms you recall before your diagnosis? The main symptoms, I guess there's like two symptoms I, I remember. One was I snored and sharing a room with someone like when I was going away to a conference or a retreat or something was like the worst thing to do because inevitably I would be paired up with someone who's like the super lightest sleeper. And then they would tell me in the morning that they weren't able to sleep at night. And then I would feel really guilty that, oh, I kept that person up the whole night. But, you know, so that was the main thing I noticed, plus being tired a lot. But I thought that was just a normal part of life, just, or my life, just being tired. In fact, I remember um, when I was in high school, my mother used to always say, comment to me, oh, how come you're always so tired? And um, I remember 10 years, be 10 or more years before the diagnosis, I asked my primary care doctor about the snoring because it was kind of frustrating keep feeling like I was causing people not to be able to sleep. And she asked me, well, do you stop breathing at night? And I said, well, I don't know. I just, I just know I snore, that's all. So it just kind of got left at that. And then um, in September of 2012, I was at a retreat where there were about six women sharing in the same room. They had, you know, some people on the floor, some people on beds. And, and um, one of the ladies that was in the room came to me in the morning and she says, well, you know, I'm not saying you have this, but, but you might check to see if you have sleep apnea. So that just kind of put a little ding, you know, in the back of my head. And I thought, okay, next time I see my doctor, I'll, I'll ask my doctor about that. And two months later, I was sharing a hotel room with another friend because we were, went to a conference meeting together. And in the morning, she asked me, when are you going to ask your doctor about sleep apnea? And I said, I said, oh, well, why? What, what are you thinking? And she said that she clearly heard me stop breathing at least four times during the night, which surprised me because I, I didn't know I stopped breathing. I didn't know what the feeling was like. And she told me that her ex-husband had that the diagnosis of sleep apnea, so she knew exactly what the sound of it was like. I determined, okay, I'm going to make an appointment and ask my doctor about it, specifically since two different people had asked me. What did your sleep test reveal? In the sleep test, I... It said that I had sleep apnea, I think it was in the mild to moderate range. And then they sent me home with a auto CPAP to do testing, to do the titration. And so that was like the worst week of sleep I ever had, trying to get adjust to the mask and just being able to sleep during the night. And I turned that puppy in, and I waited and didn't hear anything back for a few weeks, so I decided to call to find out what happened. And apparently they said that the titration didn't show that it helped my sleep apnea enough, so they signed me up for a overnight sleep study instead. And it the overnight sleep study was probably about a month later because there was a wait list. And once I had that, then I had to wait to be called by the sleep doctor who got me a CPAP or auto CPAP.
Once you were issued an auto CPAP, were the results immediate? I don't know if it really benefited me. I, I felt like I was still kind of tired and I felt like it was hard to sleep with at night. And I had heard about um, BiPAP. And so I asked my sleep center if I could, you know, try out one of those and, and it took a little pushing, but they, they actually did finally um, end up switching out my, my PAP for, well, actually they let me keep my auto PAP and they gave me a, a BiPAP. I don't think I really slept that well with that either because I was still tired. Um, I was known as a person who would fall asleep at meetings or seminars or church or whatever. I just, as soon as someone started speaking, teaching, I would just doze off. After those setbacks, what did you do? Since then, I had a couple of what they call MSLT to try to see why I had the daytime sleepiness, but because I couldn't sleep at night, um, they had to cancel those. But during one of those tests, they found out I, I had mixed sleep apnea, so they switched out my BiPAP for an ASV. And um, the first type of brand machine I had was Respironics, and I just didn't sleep very well with it. And just last January, they switched me to the ResMed, which I feel I can sleep better with. I'm still not at 100%, but better than before. How does daytime sleepiness affect you day to day? I'll be like watching someone present like, like the last session and it'll be interesting, but my eyes just kind of get really tired and then I kind of blink and then I just say, oh, well, I'm just going to rest my eyes and then suddenly I'm asleep. There was one conference, I think, every session, every time someone got up to speak, I, I was asleep. It's kind of embarrassing, to be honest with you, that I feel like, um, there I did it again, you know. I'm sitting near the front, and I'm falling asleep. For you, what are some benefits of attending the Awake Together Summit? One of the benefits for me is the people meeting other people who struggle with the same thing. Um, in fact, one of the people I met, um, I'd seen her posts on one of the forums, and so it was nice to meet the person for real. I actually envisioned that this was this big burly guy, but it was actually a really kind woman <laughs> from the username. I, I didn't know who they were, but it was just kind of funny to see that um, people from all walks of life can, um, can have this and struggle like myself. To learn more, visit sleepapnea.org now.